When NASA posted a stunning image of the interstellar lagoon nebula captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, no one realized that the nebula shown in the image wasn't accurate. The fact is that this applies not to just this one image, but all other images of colorful nebulae, star systems and galaxies. The reality is much different. Well, how would we see nebulae, stars, planets, galaxies and black holes up close? And why do agencies like NASA modify space images? The answers to this are here, and this is a video you don't want to miss. NASA has a wide collection of images that gives us access to even the smallest details of celestial objects. The dawn of this traces back to a simple black and white image. The image was captured from the White Sands rocket back in 1946 using a 35 mm motion picture camera at an altitude of 105 kilometers. The camera snapped a frame every second and a half with the first one being captured at liftoff. What happened next was indeed very interesting as just after a few minutes of flight, the rocket hit the ground and the camera crashed. But here's the catch. The recording placed in a steel cassette wasn't damaged. But technology has come a long way since then, and now scientists have access to space using the most advanced digital cameras, like the James Webb Telescope, launched on the 25th of December 2021. You've probably viewed a plethora of space images, but did you know that the images are still shot in black and white? Now you might wonder where these colors pop in from. The fact is that it isn't easy to display the universe as it exists, with the problem not lying in the universe's structure, but in the imperfections of the human eye. The human eye is only capable of distinguishing a fraction of the wide electromagnetic spectrum. Though almost all space images start in black and white, they undergo the coloration process. For this, modern telescopes are used to help in displaying our perception of color. Well, let us take the example of the Hubble Space Telescope, which during its great 32 years in orbit has taken several iconic images. The Wide Field Camera 3 of the Hubble Space Telescope is considered to be its most technologically advanced instrument to take images in the visible spectrum. This camera enables the telescope to view everything and is not limited to visible light, but can also view things in ultraviolet and infrared light that are undetectable by human eyes. Shooting starts by focusing the telescope to capture a very distant object. The next procedure involves triggering the camera at the right time to capture images in short, medium and long wavelengths. Creating a frame requires an average of about 1,000 seconds. The Hubble Space Telescope orbits the Earth at about 27,000 kilometers per hour. This means that the telescope gets the right images only after multiple revolutions around the planet. What's interesting is that each image for each wavelength is given a different color concerning its position on the color spectrum. Scientists have termed this process as broadband filtering. A huge hurdle arises because of the telescope's high speed, its enormous distance to celestial objects, radiation, dust clusters, and lack of light, which all result in the frames generated by the telescope being somewhat fuzzy. This is why the images have to be modified with the help of special photo editing programs to remove cosmic rays, satellite trails, and other interference from the images. The next step involves merging the different frames into one to get the final required version. Now you know how the initial gray space images turn out to be multicolored when presented out to the public. This is a spectacular Hubble image that captures the nebula's beating heart, the rapidly spinning pulsar located at its core. This large mosaic of the Crab Nebula was assembled from 24 different exposures captured by the Hubble Space Telescope over three months. The colors displayed in this image do not match exactly what we would see with our eyes, but the image does yield insight into the composition of this stellar corpse. The orange filaments seen in this image are the tattered remains of the star, and they consist primarily of hydrogen. 
The blue in the filaments in the outer part of the nebula represents neutral oxygen, while the green is singly ionized sulfur, and red indicates doubly ionized oxygen. All these elements were expelled during the supernova explosion. If scientists get to see a supernova through a telescope, they often see clouds of gases expelled after the explosion. With the gases absorbing different wavelengths of light, they assign proper colors to them. This is exactly how the iconic Pillars of Creation image was taken by Hubble. The Pillars of Creation image showcases the Eagle Nebula that was taken 6,500 light years away from Earth. We get to see multicolored columns of gas and dust clouds illuminated by the intense ultraviolet light being emitted by young stars, providing a visual treat. Each element is represented by a different color and corresponds to Hubble's palette. Similar to the Crab Nebula image here, sulfur is shown in red, hydrogen in green, and oxygen in blue. But this is where a question arises. Could we see that these are the actual colors of those elements? Well, not really, because each of those elements has a unique set of absorption and emission lines, and the pattern of lines is termed as a spectral signature. The absorption and emission spectra of each of these elements are opposite of each other. When light passes through a gas, atoms and molecules that are present in the gas absorb certain colors of that light. And this is called the absorption spectra, which is a rainbow with dark absorption lines. During this process, the gas can glow alongside, giving off specific colors to form an emission spectrum, along with bright lines called emission lines. Here, oxygen gives off a green and red hue, while sulfur and hydrogen are red. Now you would think, how can one differentiate sulfur and hydrogen if both of them turn out to be red? That's why the color of hydrogen is shifted towards the green spectrum, and oxygen is shifted towards the blue spectrum. This means that the image differs from reality. So the famous pillars may not look like that in reality. Now, what do you think about the images of other celestial bodies? That's a whole new story. Not long ago, the world was stunned by the first real image of the supermassive black hole, the Sagittarius A asterisk. It took eight radio telescopes that were scattered around the world to capture this image. According to astronomers, it's pretty difficult to take an image of such a huge object like this one. The black hole's accretion disk spins incredibly fast, and to generate a clear image of it, scientists had to process millions of different images on supercomputers. Well, as a result, the final image showcased a bright accretion disk of glowing gases with a black abyss in the middle. The angle of view plays a major role in the image received, and if you take a look at them perpendicular to the accretion disk, they will look like those captured by the eight radio telescopes. Whereas if the angle of view is 90 degree, you will get a different view. The light behind the black hole will be refracted over its event horizon and break through to its front. In such a case, we get to see the back and front sides of a black hole's disk simultaneously. A structure similar to a circular halo will be formed with a strip of light inside of it. The fact is that telescopes are never perfect and they are not capable of seeing everything in the universe. When it comes to distant exoplanets, their surface is usually hidden behind a dense veil of gases. When you stumble upon sources that illustrate the surfaces of distant worlds, you might be surprised to know that they are mostly visualizations prepared by artists. According to the current studies, our view of the Milky Way will change over time. Well, imagine yourself seeing your galaxy from space. That's a possible outcome. Now, what do you think about the images provided by our telescopes? And do you think they provide us with a realistic view of the universe? If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe so that we can entertain you with more videos from the cosmos.